Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by tbradley90 in the My Investing Club chat. A general reminder for those who do not know, MIC is having a one-year anniversary event where Bao is going to be trading live in front of our members. It's coming up August 17th. Mark your calendars. As an added benefit for our members, the event is 100% and exclusively free for annual and lifetime members. While lifetime, on top of that, get extra coaching before the event and guaranteed front row seating. While most charge for these events, we show our support by making it, again, free for annual and lifetime members. If you are interested in signing up for this event, DM TBradley90 in MIC Slack chat and or email myself at tosh at myinvestingclub.com. Now, we have a very special video for you guys this week as Matt, who goes by Chicago Trader, one of our head moderators in MIC chat, does his weekly fundamental analysis series. This is episode 29, in which case he talks about this week, RKDA pre-market analysis and a five to 10 minute to do research list. And while today is just a preview of the full length video, if you want to watch the full length or any of our exclusive content, then become a member of MIC. Hey everyone, what's going on? Uh, Chicago Trader here, checking in for the weekly fundamental video here on the uh, 9th of August. I uh, hope you guys are having a nice week of trading. Uh, today's uh, RKDA is moving a little bit, so I'm going to cover that. But one of the first things I wanted to get into was at the end of the last video, uh, if you guys watched it last week, I cut off on kind of like what I track um, as far as, you know, after the market closes. Um, what I wanted to touch on before I got into any specific names, um, you know, in the morning when something pops up, you know, an hour before the market, um, kind of, you know, a quick five to ten minute due diligence that I do. So um, again, as usual, before I get into it, guys, this is not investment advice on my behalf and my C's behalf. So do your own due diligence. Um, but what I've kind of thrown together is there was a few names that moved this week that I did, you know, just a quick five to ten minute uh, due diligence on and kind of had a you know a quick idea in the morning. Um, you know, some of them do require um additional research and kind of you know what i would uh you know call deep diving um but anyway so let me jump into it so real quick so my quick checklist i mean it, it really is simple it, again it's a five through ten minute thing and then if i feel like i need to look into it i'll do that is the outstanding shares increasing um recent dilution also i'm pretty cognizant of like what kind of type of dilution is it um you know like so if it's an atm i usually like those is it the first chance to use it um, you know, is it a secondary? Are they warrants? You know, what, what is it that you kind of got to, uh, in my opinion, you know, value them differently cash situation. And then you can also look at older dilution, you know, is there already an outstanding ATM? Um, are there warrants? Um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So what I want to do is there's two names that are very similar. Um, uh, they moved yesterday on the eighth OSS and HEB, both really beaten up charts, um, on the dailies. Um, but both fundamentally were pretty similar in the sense that they both had ATMs recently. Um, so this one, if you pull up RKDA, you can see right here. So this is another reason why BAMSEC is awesome. You can see these pretty clearly instead of having to click them all. Uh, on May 20th, they received a notification letter from the NASDAQ stock market indicating that the market value of listed securities so that's mvls was not 35 million dollars for and it was under that for 30 consecutive days um so once they get that delisting notice they have six months or 180 days right until november 18th to regain compliance so i got a question on this alternatively the company may regain compliance with the rule if they meet the 2.5 million dollar stockholders equity requirement under the nasdaq listing rule um so before I get into that, I guess I'll just kind of just skip around here. Um, the rules for the listing. So you must have a dollar bid, right? So that you have to absolutely 100% have that. And once you got the dollar bid and you're okay with that, which RKDA is fine, you have to meet one of the following three. Your market value of listed securities has to be 35 million. Your stockholders equity has to be 2.5 million. Or the net income for your company has to be five hundred thousand, or it's in the latest year, in the latest year, or two of the past three years, you have to at least make five hundred thousand dollars. So again, a dollar bid, and you need to meet one of this. So that's why in this eight K, it says you can either meet this 
threshold or you can meet this threshold. It doesn't matter. You just got to meet one of them. And this company loses, you know, a million dollars a month. So they're not making money. So the net income, um, they're definitely not going to meet that. They're pretty close on this one. Um, so let me get back into it. So I'm going through it. Um, and for me, if you guys have watched my last videos, um, I use net loss and, you know, there's a myriad of ways, um, to calculate burn and net loss is kind of a shortcut. It's probably not the best way, but again, when I'm doing these short, um, that's what I use. So if you came here, so when I first looked at it, you know, if we're losing $12 million a, month, uh, a quarter, you know, you divide it by three, they're losing, you know, let's call it $4 million a month. Um, but the reason I do this and I double check it, if I come back here to the last two, um, you know, and I pump, pop in uh, the net loss and you're, this is the uh, 10K. So this is going to be for a 12 month, right? This is going to be, so they lost $13 million for all of last year. Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by T Bradley 90 in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say if you have any questions about MIC, joining MIC, maybe you're a member already, you have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media, you can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at Tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T O S H at myinvestingclub.com. I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right, see you guys.